So in the last episode, the character control is really starting to come together. We have wall sliding, we've got wall jumping, we've got climbing and ledge grabbing, we've got rolling. And in this episode, we're just going to add to that even further and continue to extend oh. this Mario style controller. Ah, spaghetti. And I think after that, we'll be close to finishing all of the basic moves that I expect this character to have. And everything else from that point on will be power-ups or moves that you don't start the game with. But before that, and I don't want to go on about this every time, but... The subs have quadrupled since the last video and and look at that i've never seen that before that's absolutely crazy and quite nerve-wracking <laughs> and uh, i'll probably be relieved when i see the first dislike but that's been so cool to see the response so thank you guys so i actually started out by modeling the game's first enemy i came up with this little bug character and the idea with him is that when he sees you he locks onto you and this big cannon comes out of his shell and you'll just have to dodge this slow moving lobbed projectile that explodes and creates like a radius of damage and i made it so that the shape of his shell actually gives the illusion of him having like this little frowny face but then you can see when his shell's lifted up he suddenly looks kind of wide-eyed and a bit derpy and i was quite happy with this design but Unfortunately, when he's in the game, because of the camera angle generally being down towards the ground, you can't see his face very well anymore. And I wasn't immediately sure how to uh, fix this problem. In fact, I spent quite a long time stressing over it. So what I did was I created this bin model and then I put him in there and now he's gone and I don't have to think about him. I might fish him out later, we'll see. So back to the main character. The first thing I did was to add a Mario style ground pound animation. I say Mario style because I think that was the first game to use it, Mario 64, but it's something you see in every 3D platformer really. First I got the character just stopping in the air and moving down. This created some slight issues with the jumping. If you look carefully, you might see that something's not right here. I have to go now. My planet needs me. So then I fixed that and everything was looking pretty good. And then I added some animation. So I've got him just slamming into the ground with his bum. I also added a little bounce on impact. It's just like a jump, but it goes to a shorter height. And I'll probably add some effects at some point to really sell this added momentum coming from somewhere, like some smoke puffing out the top or some speed lines. And then I added the ability to dive out of a ground pound. So if you ground pound and then press roll in the air, you actually do a dive. Again, similar to Mario, and it adds a lot more options for traversing different things, for getting up onto the top of surfaces in new ways. For some reason, he was still refusing to accept gravity. I'm not saying flying's not on the cards for this game, but uh, not like this. He can fly! He can fly! He because this is such a dynamic move, I had to consider the ways in which this character lands after a roll. So if you're holding a direction when you land, then you'll just roll once and then pop up into your running animation and continue running. If you're not holding the joystick to move when you land, then you'll just spring back up off of your hands into your standing pose. And finally, I wanted to make it so that if you hit roll while you're in the air, then when you hit the ground, you'll go immediately into a roll without losing any velocity. So our character's starting to get pretty good at parkour now. Parkour! But with this next ability that I want to add, I think he's really going to start to come into his own as a platforming character and move around in ways that I don't think people really have seen before. So I'm going to give the character the ability to roll along a surface out of a dive and then dive off of that surface in a set direction based on the angle at which he comes from the wall. So it's like a modified wall run where you have the ability to choose the direction in any direction whether it be up, down, left, right, you can travel along the surface in any of those directions for a short while and then you jump off. And you'll see after we're done the new possibilities this opens up. So I began by casting a ray out in front of the character and detecting the wall in front and detecting the normal, which is the direction that the wall is pointing. And once I got this information, I'm able to calculate a lot about different angles relative to the wall and the character. So I've made it so that you're limited in the angles at which you can jump off of the wall by the direction that you approach the wall. So when you're coming at the wall straight on, you're able to roll in pretty much any direction. But if you're coming from the side, you're limited by your momentum. So, so it's just like in real life, if you're running at the wall at an angle, you wouldn't be able to then jump straight back in the direction you just came. So I wanted to limit the directions that you have available to you to jump off at. 
So you can see in this slow motion clip here, the player jumps at the wall and then they've got a set range of angles at which they can roll along the wall. And this roll direction that you choose then decides the angle that you're also going to dive off of the wall at. And if they come at the wall more straight on, they can roll in any direction, up, down, left, right, whatever. And then I noticed that the player was actually rolling further than the wall actually extends. So I had to add some code in order to understand when the player has reached the end of the wall and then it becomes unstuck. I might change the animation from a roll to like a slide uh, at some point, but I'm happy with this for now to represent the movement. I just wanted there to be a visual change for now to make it clear that you're stuck to the wall, but I think this could be improved. So then I added the dive off of the wall. And as I said before, this angle at which you dive off of the wall is determined by the direction that you're rolling along the wall. So if you roll up a surface and then dive, you'll dive straight away from the wall. But if you're rolling along a surface, you'll dive at an angle. And now we've got this new move, we can get to places in new and exciting ways. So if I'm imagining somebody speedrunning this game, they could choose to just do wall jumps from side to side up, up this tower, which would be very slow, or they could do it this way. And there are certain surfaces where before the walls were too far apart to even make it across the gap. But now with this new roll and dive uh, technique, you can make it across that gap. And there are lots of different ways in which this can be used. I mean, ways in which I probably haven't even considered yet. So the next thing I want to do with this project is to get the effects looking really good and get everything, just basically get everything looking very polished. Final animations, final effects for the character, when he ground pounds, there's going to be smoke coming out off the floor and things like that. And then I want to release this with a few little levels and a timer for speed running. And I just want to get you guys to play it and see what you think. So that will be the next goal. I also want to start making some other kinds of video on this channel. I want, if anybody has any suggestions for silly challenges that I could do, or maybe tough challenges, it could be something ridiculous like, like see how much of a Pokemon game I can recreate in 24 hours or something. And it doesn't matter if I do it well, it's just a fun, stupid challenge. Let me know in the comments if you have any cool ideas. A few of you have asked about setting up a Discord, um, but I think it's a bit too early to be honest. I think um, two devlogs is not really enough to base a whole Discord and a community off of. For me, anyway. If somebody else wants to go and set up a Discord and then uh, link, link it to me, then I'm happy for them to do that. But I might not be very active there. I'm honestly happy at the moment just to read your guys' lovely uh, YouTube comments and keep it all here. I think having one-on-one -on -one conversations with people about the game at this point and giving people access to chat to me whenever they like is just going to be a distraction, to be honest, and you're just going to be disappointed when I don't reply. <laughs> a lot of people have also asked to help with the game, like 20 people, and man, that's so nice. But again, it's too early. I don't want to be a project manager yet. However, I am still interested in seeing what people are capable of, so if you want to send me an email to gogogofeedback at gmail.com, with some examples of your work, maybe a link to your website or your showreel, and that'd be great. But it won't be right now that I'm looking for people to help with the project. And also, if you don't even send examples of your work, I might not even reply, so just keep that in mind. That's it for this episode, though. Um, if you want to support me, you can check out my game, Go Go Go. It's a party game. Uh, I just discovered, actually, that it was App of the Day in Canada recently, so that makes two countries that it's been App of the Day on the App Store so far. That's the USA and Canada now. So go check it out and let me know what you think. Thanks very much guys, and I'll see you in the next episode.